it to work. <laughs> Prostrating at the lotus feet of Brahmanishta, Shotriya Sadguru Swami Virajeshwara Saraswati on behalf of all of us and the entire Guru Parampara. Today's discourse on Viveka Shudamani will continue. Om Sri Ganesha Yanamaha Om Sri Mahasarsvaty Namaha Tata Shiva Samaram Bham Sri Shankara Charya Matmam Masmada Charya Pariyantam Vande Guru Parampara Shruti Smruti Purana Malayam Karuna Alayam Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Shankaram Shankara Charyam Keshavam Padarayanam Sutra Bhasha Gurdo one day, Bhagavanta, Puna, Puna, Sarva Vedanta, Siddhanta, Gocharam, Tamagocharam, Govindam, Paramanandam, Tatpurum, Pranatos, Niham, Yum Nama, Bhagavate, Virajeshara, Hariko. For the Sala, Acharya Shankara, Bhagavat Father, Viveka Chuda Mandi, Munura Yapat Tumbatni Shok, Bandidvi. Ivatu Munura Yambatne Shloka Dinda Munura Yapatumbatala Matu Munura Yapat Arne Shloka Kipanditvi Ivatu Munura Yapat Yolne Shloka with the Param. So we had stopped at the verse number three seventy six last time in the Vivek Shloka. And from three seventy seven onwards today, the discourse will continue as. This is purely based on, again, once in a way, I'll be repeating this point. The discourse is inspired and mainly based on the commentary given by Sri Chandrasekhar Bharati Mahaswamgar on the Viveka Chuda. The Pontiff and Jagat Guru of Sringiri Sharada Peetham. The last time, the shloka was big enough with the four charanas. The last charana, last line is so important, so important because Acharya here totally in all his earnest feeling, he gives the highest upadesha which have already been enshrined in the Upanishads to the shishya, to the disciple, to the uttamadika. Acharya Ru, he hid in a shloka the lip, Oda Salati, shloka the lane held like a red, Shishin Atmani Pradyam Kurushwa, the most important uh, landline point here to remember the previous shloka. Atmani Pradyam Kurushwa, Quam Drushka Si, Quam Amalo Si. Vam nirdvaya param brahmasi vastutaha. These are the key points. Last sentence. I repeat. Atmani prajnam purushva. Vam trashtasi. Vam amalosi. Vam nirdvaya param brahmasi. Yet vastutaha. Vastutaha means in reality. Nijuvaglu nodapashishya. Nan hear Tairo than Pahala Gambir Unasninda Atiente Gushitamavadanta Satya Satyavadanta Vachinamane hear Taitene Kanditawagyu was to the means that in reality, absolutely speaking, I am telling you the truth, my dear disciple, was to the in reality. Vam drishta si. You are the seer. Vam amulosi. You are the purest of the pure awareness. You are the purest of the pure prajna. You are the purest of the pure chit. That jnana itself, that knowledge itself. Vam nirdvaya param brahmati. And Acharya says finally, Vam nirdaya, nirdvaya param brahmati. So, ultimately, you are that one and the only. Ekam eva advitiyam. 
one and the only vastu that absolute that primordial unmanifest absolute what is called in vedanta is param brahma paramatma paramatma tattva ishwari tattva godly principle cosmic principle all these principles. so you are that param brahma only you are that paramatma vastu only remember that is acharya is telling in this that was covered last time ಈ ಶ್ಲೋಕದ ಕೊನೆಯ ಚರಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಹೇಳಿರುವುದು ಮೂಲವಾಗಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ತುಗಳ ಸಾರವಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಗಹನವಾದ ಗಂಭೀರವಾದ ರಹಸ್ಯವಾದ ಜ್ಞಾನಮಯವಾದ ಜ್ಞಾನಪ್ರದವಾದ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಮಹಾಮಂತ್ರಗಳು ಅಥವಾ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಮಹಾವಾಕ್ಯಗಳನ್ನ ನಿರ್ದೇಶನ ಇಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡು ಅವುಗಳನ್ನ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡು ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಇದನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಮಹಾವಾಕ್ಯಗಳು ಯಾವುದು ಉಪನಿಷತ್ತುಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿರೋದು ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಮಹಾವಾಕ್ಯಗಳಿವೆ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಮುಖ್ಯ ಯಾವುದು ನಾಲ್ಕು ತತ್ವಮಸಿ ಅಯಮಾತ್ಮ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಅಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಅಸ್ಮಿ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ದ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾವಾಕ್ಯ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ statements in the upanishads and the summary of all the four mahavakyas acharya has introduced here tatvamasi is an instructive type mahavakya where the sadguru tells the shishya that you are that only tvam tatasi you are that only nothing else nothing else all these things acharya has covered earlier early he has described he has beautifully analyzed the, the, the nature of tat the nature of tvam very clearly lucidly in the vivek chuda that we have already covered so you are that only prajnanam brahma the point to experience what is a prajnanam prajnanam means that total awareness that total chit that cosmic principle called chit shakti all these names names and things that nothing but pure jnana it is a pure reality it is nothing but the chit nothing but sat so that is prajnan prajnanam brahma so that jnana itself is param brahma vastu prajnanam brahma ayam atma brahma if you take another mahavakya of ayam atma brahma that means in in simple this atma is nothing but brahma only ayam atma brahma ayam atma brahma upanishad mahavakya why it is called i am here that preface added the first word i am atma so this atma what is this here this means that which is shining inside that which is eternally present inside inside our subtle body inside the gross body and subtle body inside the physical body and the subtle body within the five pancha koshas that which is present that invisible present inside only in the cave of the heart the vedantic words not the literal sense of your muscular heart in the cave of buddhi sometimes it is called in vedanta so within the buddhi jnanamaya kosha as a sakshi swarupa it is always present eternally shining eternally shining eternally radiating self shining it is called self reflecting it is called it reflects everything and the buddhi being the closest jada padartha 
the buddhi is also reflected by the presence of atma so that is why called i am atma brahma so this atma is nothing but brahma only this atma is nothing but that sanatana purna avyakta unmanifest nirvishesha nirguna param brahma vastu in our language atma nothing but god only ayam atma brahma then another mahavar is aham brahmasmi this mahavakya of upanishad aham brahmasmi literally mean i am that brahma i am that brahma only i am that god only the moment this mahavakya is uttered by a sadguru or a sage there is a possibility people will confuse this they equate that to their body only sharira only aham brahmasmi aham here doesn't mean to the ego doesn't mean to the personality doesn't mean to your individuality it does not refer to your body it does not refer to the mind it does not refer to your swabhimana your individuality existing it does not refer to the status it does not refer to whether you are male or female whether you are rich or poor it doesn't refer to your body mind complex at all so people sometimes always get confused they will number of times they will ask the question how do you say aham brahmasmi are you god see with a question puts in in this way when the onlooker puts a question say for example to me now he will say how do you say how do you declare that aham brahma how do you say you are brahma so in the question itself see the narrative is totally deluded narrative it is influenced by the maya the reality is not known so the question itself is absurd now i cannot say in the literal sense as the questioner puts in how do you say you are brahma no i am not the brahma that is the answer then what then why do you say aham brahmasmi the answer for that is aham brahmasmi does not refer to the body mind complex as long as the delusion the effect of maya is there as long as sharira abhimana is there as long as identifying myself as a body it is persisting till the last breath till the last day of the death this will never be understood so this body mind cannot become aham brahmasmi no only by the grace of god or sadguru only by his grace and by purvajanma punya bala if the spiritual journey is undertaken with all conviction with proper shravana manana nididhyasana nididhyasana in our english for our sake let us just simply put it as meditation guruvina upadeshagala sahayadinda avugalanna keli shravana manana avugalanna dhana avugala bagge melakaakta melakaakta artha maadkolta ಸಂದೇಹ ಇಲ್ಲದ ಹಾಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಧ್ಯಾನದ ಪ್ರಕ್ರಿಯೆ ಮುಂದುವರೆಸಿದ್ದಾದರೆ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ನಾವು ಗುರುವಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಶರಣಾಗತನಾದರೆ ಅಥವಾ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನಲ್ಲಿ ಶರಣಾಗತನಾಗಿ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಪ್ರಕ್ರಿಯೆ ಮುಂದುವರೆಸೋದಾದರೆ ಯಾವುದೋ ಒಂದು ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಭಗವಂತ ಅಥವಾ ಈಶ್ವರನ ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಅಥವಾ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಗೆ ಮನಸ್ಸು ತಲುಪಬಹುದು ಮನಸ್ಸು ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧ ನಿಧಾನವಾಗಿ ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಹೋಗಬಹುದು ವಾಸನಾಕ್ಷಯ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಹೋಗಬಹುದು ವಾಸನೆಗಳು ಒಂದೊಂದಾಗಿ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹೋಗ್ಬೋದು ಇವೆಲ್ಲವೂ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಆಗುವಂಥದ್ದು ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನ ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಅನ್ನೋದು ನೆನಪಿಕೊಳ್ತೇನೆ ಆದರೆ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಶ್ರದ್ಧೆ ನಂಬಿಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಇರಬೇಕು ಇದು ನಿಜವಾದ ಆಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ಪಯಣದ ರಹಸ್ಯ ಆತ್ಮ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರದ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರದ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಕೊನೆಯ ಹಂತದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಇದು 
ಸ್ವಯಂ ಅನುಭವಕ್ಕೆ ಬರುವಂತಹದ್ದು ಏನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಇದುವರೆಗೂ ನಾನು ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದು ತಪ್ಪು ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ನಾನು ಯಾರು ಅಂತ ಅರಿವಾಯಿತು ನಾನು ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಆ ಆತ್ಮವೇ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಾಗಿದೆ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ನಾನೇ ಆ ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಈ ಭಾವ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಇದು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರದ ಕೊನೆಯ ಹಂತ ಅಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಸ್ಮಿ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಜನಗಳ ಎದುರಿಗೆ ಜಗತ್ತಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲರ ಎದುರಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಚಾರದ ಆಸೆಯಿಂದ ಹೇಳುವಂತ ವಿಷಯವೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಯೂ ಆದ್ರಿಂದ ನಾನು ಜ್ಞಾನವಂತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಿಯಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನನಗೆ ಆತ್ಮ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರ ಆಗಿದೆ ನನಗೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಯಾವ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಯೂ ಹೇಳೋದು ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ಎದುರಿಗೆ ಹೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇರೋದು ಒಂದೇ ವಸ್ತು ಆದ್ರಿಂದ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮ ಭಾವದಲ್ಲಿ ತನ್ಮಯನಾಗಿ ಸ್ವಂತ ಅನುಭವಕ್ಕೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಬರುವಂತಹದ್ದು ಜ್ಞಾನೋತ್ಪತ್ತಿಯ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಅನುಭವದಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ನೇರ ಅನುಭವ ಆಗ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥದ್ದು ಯಾವುದು ಅಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಸ್ಮಿ ಈ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಮಹಾವಾಕ್ಯದ ಒಳ ಅರ್ಥ ಸೊ ಅಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಸ್ಮಿ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫೈನಲ್ ವಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಆಸ್ ಕಲ್ಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಟ್ರೂ ನೇಚರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಹಾವಾಕ್ಯ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ clear and clear as own personal experience that i am that only i am that brahma swarupa only what earlier upanishad said you are that what is that that means parmatma that means ishwar that means godly concept that means unmanifest nirvishesha nirvikalpa param brahma there is only one there is only one there is only one no other no second so i am that parabrahma was so that is the final culmination of the path of realization now we'll go to the today's ಲಕ್ಷೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣೆ ಮಾನಸಂ ದೃಢತರ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪ್ಯ ಬಾಹೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥಾನ ವಿನಿವೇಶ್ಯ ನಿಶ್ಚಲತನು ಚೋಪೇಕ್ಷ ದೇಹ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾತ್ಮೈಕ್ಯಮುಪೇತ್ಯ ತನ್ಮಯತೆಯ ಕಾಖಂಡವೃತ್ಯಾನಿಶಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದರಸಂ ಪಿಬಾತ್ಮನಿ ಮುದ ಶೂನ್ಯೈತಿ ಮನ್ಯೈರ್ಭ್ರಮೈ fairly long shloka with this verse with four charana four lines lakshye brahmani manasam drudataram samsthapya bahyendriyam swasthane viniveshya nischala tanuho chopeksha dehasthitim brahmatmaikyam opetya tanmayataya kakhanda vrutya nisham ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದರಸಂ ಪಿವಾತ್ಮನಿ ಮುದ ಶೂನ್ಯೈ ಕಿಮನ್ಯೈರ್ಭಮೈ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಚರಣ ದ ಕೀ ಫ್ರೇಸ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಚರಣ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪುಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಟು ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಲುಕ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಕಿಂ ಅನ್ಯೈರ್ಭ್ರಮೈ ಶೂನ್ಯೈ kim anyayir bhramai hi shunyai he frees shunyai hi kim anyayir bhramai hi my dear my dear disciple why do you grapple in the dark why do you wade in the darkness full of tamas why do you get deluded why are you be you know enchanted by this maya called creation why are you so much attached to the insentient these associations in life that they are permanent why are you attracted towards vishesh why are you attracted towards your attachment with your kids and kins only saying that they are only mine others are not mine so all these brahma all the illusions why what for 
they will further bind you in the samsara they will further tie you up in the samsara they will bind you so firmly in this ocean called samsara in the river called samsara you will never come up you will never come up you will never reach the shore so birth death rebirth cycle goes on and on because you are caught up in the delusion brahma brahma shunyai anyer brahmai kim why why are you caught wake up wake up my dear disciple there is a point i try to make लक्ष्ये ब्रह्मणि मानसम दृढतरम संस्थाप्य बाहिन्द्रियम स्वस्थाने विनिवेश्य निश्चलतनु हो नाउ इन द श्लोक वेरी लॉन्ग ये ने हेल्प आई देयर आचार्य रो अंदरे ज्ञानद महत्वद जतेगे ज्ञान प्रक्रिये ज्ञानद विधि बगे हेल्प सुखासनदली एकांतदली नेरवागे लंबवागे ತೊಂಬತ್ತು ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ತ್ರಿಕೋಣದಲ್ಲಿ ದೇಹ ನೆಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡಿರುವಂತಹ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಇರಬೇಕು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಸ್ಥಿರವಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಸುಖಾಸನ ಆ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಮನಸ್ಸನ್ನ ಬಿಗಿ ಹಿಡಿದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಗಳನ್ನ ಬಿಗಿ ಹಿಡಿದು ಕಣ್ಣು ಮುಚ್ಕೊಂಡಿರಬೇಕು ಆಯಾ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಗಳು ತಮ್ಮ ತಮ್ಮ ಸ್ಥಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಇರಬೇಕು ಯಾವ ಯೋಚನೆ ಇರಬಾರ್ದು ಹೊರಗಿನ ಯೋಚನೆ ಇರಬಾರ್ದು ಹಾಗೆ ತನ್ಮಯತೆಯಿಂದ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಧ್ಯಾನವನ್ನ ಪ್ರಾರಂಭ ಮಾಡಿ ಮನಸ್ಸನ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಸ್ತು ಆ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಸ್ತುವಿನಲ್ಲೇ ಮನಸ್ಸನ್ನು ಈಗಾಗ್ರತೆ ಮಾಡಿ ನಾನು ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಈ ದೇಹನೂ ಅಲ್ಲ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಅಲ್ಲ ಇದ್ರಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋ ಭಾವದಲ್ಲಿ ತನ್ಮಯತೆಯಿಂದ ಏಕಾಗ್ರತೆಯಿಂದ ಜ್ಞಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥಾನೇ ವಿನಿವೇಶ್ಯ ನಿಶ್ಚಲತನು ಉಪೇಕ್ಷ ದೇಹಸ್ಥಿತಿ ದೇಹದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಭಿಮಾನವನ್ನು ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ದೇಹ ಶರೀರದ ಅಭಿಮಾನವನ್ನೇ ತೊರೆದು ಒಂದು ಕಡೆ ನಿಶ್ಚಲವಾಗಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ಆ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಬಹಿರ್ಮುಖ ಆಗಿರಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಆಚೆ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಸ್ವಸ್ಥಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಸ್ತುವಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಂದ್ರೀಕೃತವಾಗಿರಬೇಕು ಈ ಧ್ಯಾನದ ವಿಧಿ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಹೀಗಿರಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಶರೀರವನ್ನು ನಿಶ್ಚಲ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಶರೀರ ರಕ್ಷಣೆ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಗಮನ ಕೊಡದೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾತ್ಮ ಏಕತ್ವ ಭಾವವನ್ನು ಧರಿಸಿ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪವೂ ಆಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಅಖಂಡಾಕಾರ ವೃತ್ತಿಯಿಂದ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ನಿನ್ನಲ್ಲೇ ನೀನು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ರಸವನ್ನು ಸಂತೋಷದಿಂದ ಕುಡಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ರಸಂ ಪಿಬ ಆತ್ಮನಿ ಮುದ ಆತ್ಮನಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ರಸಂ ಪಿಬ ಆತ್ಮನಿ ಮುದ ಸಂತೋಷದಿಂದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ರಸವನ್ನ ಕುಡಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನೀನು ಆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದವನ್ನ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಅನುಭವಿಸು ಧ್ಯಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಅನುಭವಿಸು ಮನಸ್ಸಿನ ಏಕಾಗ್ರತೆಯಿಂದ ದೇಹವನ್ನ ನಿಶ್ಚಲಗೊಳಿಸಿ ಧ್ಯಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಆನಂದವನ್ನ ಅನುಭವಿಸಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮ ಎರಡು ಒಂದೇ ಅನ್ನೋ ಭಾವ ಅಖಂಡಾಕಾರ ವೃತ್ತಿ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಮನಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇರಬೇಕು ತೈಲದ ಹಾರೆ ಏಕವಾಗಿ ಬೀಳ್ತಾ ಇರೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಮನಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇರಬೇಕು ನಾನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪ ನಾನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ದೇಹ ಅಲ್ಲ ಈ ನಾನು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆತ್ಮ ಈ ಆತ್ಮ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯಾರೋ ಈ ಆತ್ಮ ಬೇರೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಬೇರೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಈ ಆತ್ಮ ಆ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಎರಡು ಒಂದೇ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮ ಏಕತ್ವ ಭಾವ ಅಥವಾ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮ ಭಾವ ಇದನ್ನು ನೀನು ಬೆಳೆಸಿಕೊಂಡು ನಿಶ್ಚಲತೆಯಿಂದ ತನ್ಮತೆಯಿಂದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದವನ್ನು ಅನುಭವಿಸು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ is uh, 370, uh, 377 we are starting. So what he says, Acharya, here in the shloka, he is, he is giving out basically in simple way the method of meditation. The simple method of meditation. Nididhyasana prakriya, dhana prakriya. He is doling out to the disciple. What he says here, ಲಕ್ಷೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ಮಾನಸಂ ದೃಢತರಂ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪ್ಯ ಬಾಹೇಂದ್ರಿಯಂ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥಾನೇ ವಿನಿವೇಶ್ಯ ನಿಶ್ಚಲತನು ಉಪೇಕ್ಷ್ಯ ದೇಹ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಬಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಮಚ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಕಂಫರ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಂಫರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಸಿಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಒನ್ ಪ್ಲ
cultivate the habit of sitting at one place for a specific amount of time without bothering about the discomfort or comfort of the body, the physical body. Upeksha deha sthitim. Don't, don't bother about your body, physical body. Sit quietly. Control all your motor senses and the five jnanendriya, sensory organs. Close your eyes. Let your ears. You have to control that your ears should not hear outside sounds. Close your mouth. Let anything happen. You should not even talk. Be silent. And above all, mind. Fix the mind in Brahmani. Fix the mind in Paramatma only. Establishing firmly the mind in the goal. What is the goal? The goal is I must know my reality. I must know my real nature. Who am I? So fix that. Who am I? Really, am I body? Am I mind? Or I am some Single, as Upanishads call, am I the Atma Swarupa myself? Am I the Brahma Swarupa? So contemplate on that. Fix the mind on Parabrahma. Fix the mind on Paramatma in our simple life. Fix the mind on the God. Even if it is Sakar Sagunaru. Because meditating on Nirakara Brahma is not possible. To majority. So always you need a prop, you need a support. So fix your mind on Sakara, Ishta Devata. It can be anything. Fix our mind on the Paramatma, Ishta Devata Rupa, Sakara Rupa, Sakara Parabhima Rupa, Sagana Rupa. With all devotion, with all Shraddha, with all Bhakti, pouring out and with a total. Sharanagata, surrender. So without surrender, without bhakti, without determination, without that devotion, meditation cannot continue. So that is how when, when Acharya says, Lakshya Brahmani Manasam Drudataram means establish firmly your mind in the goal, mind in the Paramatma himself. Brahmas, Parabrahma Vastu, Savuna Paramatma himself, Ishvara himself, your Ishta Devata, Aradhya Devata himself. You control all your sensory organs. Put all your motor organs at rest. Let the body be at rest. Let it not move. Sit at one place. So don't bother to safeguard the body. Be unmindful of your body, physical body and try to totally concentrate and try to attain the oneness with Atma and Brahma. Try to visualize that you are the Atma Swarupa and the Atma Swarupa nothing but Brahma Swarupa. So there is no difference between Atma and Paramatma. So you have to visualize, you have to concentrate, you have to contemplate, you have to reflect upon very deeply in the process of meditation. How, how nice and easy to say all these words. The words remain words only. Ultimately, I laugh. I laugh because the words are coming out from the mouth without knowing whether these words are reaching the opposite person who is sitting and listening. The initial spiritual aspirants. Because words ultimately will not convey Words always fail. Words always fail. Upanishad itself says, Yato vacho nivartante apraptya manasas. By words we cannot convey Paramatma. By words we cannot explain Samadhisthi. By words we cannot explain what is meditation, what is deep meditation, what is contemplation, what is manana, what is reflection, what is nididhyasana. But for the sake of communication, we have to use these words. There is no other way. No other way. So when the mind gears up, when there is total sharanagat, 
we have to completely surrender. When I don't know anything, I have to surrender at the feet of God or at the feet of Sadhguru. Show me the way, my dear Guru Deva. Show me the way, my dear Ishta Devata, my dear Aradhya Devata. Paramatma, show me the way. I am ready to offer myself. See, how much they are. Hours together we can see. This is what Ajayar is hinting in a simple way. बिकमिंग वन विथ इट ब्रह्माकार अखंड वृत्ति विदउट एनी डिविजन बिकमिंग वन विथ ब्रह्म That is akanda karu. With the infinite expanse of the conscious mind, becoming one with Parabrahma Vastu, one with Paramatma, one with Atma. Again, again word, again word. The words fail here to convey properly, or it may be like this: I am unable to say because I am not an expert. I am not a scholar. I don't know some script. Maybe all these things. So here, attaining identity with the oneness or Brahma, Brahmatmai kiam upetya tanmaya taya. Tanmaya tanmaya taya means with the total concentration, like the highly dense viscous oil when you pour from a bottle, it falls down. slowly when you pour like a single line without any break oil droplets it's so viscous with highest surface tension they're all clumped together so it looks like a single dhara single dhara without any break so that is what tanmayataya when you burn a wick or a flame in a nirvata condition where the wind is not blowing the flame doesn't flicker at all you must have seen that even if a slight wind blows the flame burning flame will flick you know flicker so the steady still nature of the flame the mind should be like that. steady and still no distraction no other thoughts mind should rest on god only mind should contemplate on god only mind should think on god only so that is what is called brahmatma brahmatmaikyam upetya tanmayate akhanda akhanda vrutya anisham akhanda vrutya ya anisham anisham means always akhanda vrutti with akhanda ka akhanda kara vrutti endrenu yelliyu madhya madhya बिटु बिड़दे वे भाव ऐक भाव तन्मयत परमात्म चिंत विषय परमात्म मन अब अखंडाकार वृत्ति तन्मयत ध्यान विधि आचार्य अद्धार सो बिकमिंग वन विथ इट एंड दि इनफाइनट एक्सपैंड आफ युर् मैंड वे मैंड इनफाइनटली एक्सपैंड वि कॉन्शियने सो दट then the mind becomes pure and it attains that brahmakara vrutti till that till that mind will not attain mind is fickle mind moves here and there thoughts will come the moment you sit for meditation all thoughts will come hundreds of thoughts will come so the thoughtlessness nature of the mind stillness of the mind that results in akandakara vrutti brahmakara what acharya is hinting in this shloka he is ultimately explaining the method of real meditation and then he says then once your mind enters into that akhandakara vrutti or brahmakara vrutti then brahmananda rasam pipa atmani muda then muda with the feeling of that joy the feeling of ecstasy with the feeling of euphoria 
ड्रिंक द नेक्टर ऑफ ब्रह्मानंद आचार्य ब्रह्मानंद रसम पिब आत्मनी विथ इन युअर सेल्फ यू बिकम वन विथ युअर ओन सेल्फ यू रियलाइज द आत्मन विथ इन युअर ओन सेल्फ यू रियलाइज द ब्रह्म पदार्थ विथ इन युअर ओन सेल्फ यू रियलाइज दट यू आर दट आत्मा and that atma is nothing but paramatma within your own self so that is the culmination called devotion of bliss the superfluous joy which surpasses all your pleasures and happiness in the material world this is the real joy the real happiness ever lasting never exhausting it will never exhaust it will never go away so that permanently at the highest level that joy is called as brahmana that is a real bliss it is called. so enjoy that real bliss drink that nectar of real bliss brahmananda rasam piba atmani muda how beautifully acharya uses the word he says you drink that brahmananda rasa no better than acharya can he being a, such a prolific writer and a great poet of par excellence not only acharya is brahma swarupa shiva swarupa he is sarvajna sarvatma swarupa he is a, known as great greatest of the great poets also remember if you go through the poetic style the beautiful narration the alankara he has used the similes and metaphors he has used in the poem the long poems called saundarya lahari shivanand lahari or moha mudgara or dakshinamurti stotra how much beautiful similes he has used metaphors he has used so he says drink the nectar of brahmananda he means what you realize your own true nature and be happy eternally permanently without an iota of doubt losing the body mind consciousness detaching and knowing the real nature no more you will be deluded no more you will be enamored or attached or you are <coughs> attracted to any of the worldly pleasures worldly joy so that's what he says shunya hi kimanyair bhame kimanyair bhame hi shun then where is the question of you being attached to the world worldly pleasure worldly joy worldly things pleasure worldly things no more you are attached because you have reached the highest state of brahmananda supreme bliss it is higher than the normal pleasure joy of worldly life so when you become epitome of brahmananda itself what is it then you will never be attracted by or you will be never deluded by the worldly pleasure that is the meaning here so why do you have develop all the this notion this why are you bothered about the futile illusions brahma they will not bother you anymore so forget about it so that is the point there is a point i said next simple shlok continues he continues the same point anatma chintanam tyaktva kashmalam dukha karanam chintayatmana 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 ananda roopam yan mukti karanam अनात्मचिंतन त्यक्वा कश्मल दुख कारण चिंतयात्मा आनंद यमुक्ति कारण वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉर्वर्ड वेरी सिंपल श्लोक वाट इस अत्यंत कोलपो कश्मलू मत दुखकू कारण अनात्म जड़ पदार्थवारत देहली शरीर दल अभिमान अनात्म चिंतन देहवे नानु अटू 
ಧ್ಯಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿನಗೆ ಮುಕ್ತಿಗೂ ನಿನ್ನ ಆನಂದಕ್ಕೆ ಆನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಆನಂದ ರೂಪಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾರಣನಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಆನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಧಾನವಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಆತ್ಮನ ಕುರಿತು ಚಿಂತಿಸಪ್ಪ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಈ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಚಿಂತನೆಯನ್ನು ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬಿಡುವ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಏಸ್ ಕಿಯರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಆಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ವಸ್ತು ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈ ವಿತ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿ ಬಾಡಿ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪೆರಿಷಬಲ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪೆರಿಷಬಲ್ ಟುಡೇ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬ್ಯಾನಿಶ್ whether it is a sentient object insentient object anything whether there are our people its sentience or this body or friends or foes whatever it whole srishti everything it appears today to be real but really they are unreal in the adhyatma sense in the paramarthic sense they are unreal why they are jada because they are ashashwa they are not eternal they transform they change and one day they die one day they disappear so what acharya is it? giving up all your thoughts on the anatma was objects of anatma centenary and insentient uh, insentient things about the world give up all the attachments is, this is nothing but kashmalam dukha karanam so it is impure and it gives you grief the more you get attached to sensuous subjects the more you get attached to pleasurable things pleasurable objects the more you attach towards money the more you are attached towards wealth the more you are attached to your, only your kids and kids thinking that they are mine others are not mine so if you are more attached to your own people than others without bothering the whole world is the player yeah without knowing that every without in you know, the word without developing sarvatma bhav only some people are mine others are not mine. this is mamaka so give up all such feeling give up mamaka give up attachment give attachment to anything in life don't be too much attached because they ultimately result in grief and sorrow you are put into sorrow because of these things kashmalam dukha karanam so with that anatma chintanam tyaktva chintaya atmanam ananda roopam mukti karanam chintaya atmanam ananda roopam mukti karanam so you are that real atma swarupa which is nothing but ananda swarupa and thereby you are liberated once you first hand directly perceive this that you are atma swarupa so it results in liberation the moment you are identified with atma swarupa the moment the sharira abhimana goes away the moment reality gone the moment i know who really i am the moment i know my swaswarupa my own real nature that i am the atma swarupa and this atma swarupa is nothing but brahma swarupa there is no difference between atma and paramatma atma and param brahma vastu once that bhava that feeling as a first hand experience sets in brahma atma ekatva bhava sets in that results in liberation mukti acharya that results in liberation again and again acharya is pin point if you continue in this life thinking it is totally real that means because of maya our mind is totally deluded so we are bound completely and we are born we live we struggle work hard try to make ends try to make more money try to meet both ends try to discharge all responsibilities and we in the journey of life we develop lot of foes and friends enemies and the mind is always always stressed out always restless always agitated always in desire 
and the moment of happiness always there are very few in our life here and there but more than the moments of happiness the moment of sorrow and grief they engulf our mind completely they will not vanish they will not go away they remain so till last breath we fight we struggle we worry and we worry and we worry all the time about tomorrow what is going to happen tomorrow what is going to happen to me what is going to happen to my people so how much money i can save how much more money i should keep in my account see all these things see when these things <laughs> take up the importance in our life when they become primary focus in our life our primary goal we just lose the sight so we we die one day pathetically miserably totally helplessly as our gurudev used to always say this point nowadays in the age of kali in the 21st century remember 99.9% people die in the hospital on the hospital bed where the nurses paramedical staff or the doctors are least bothered because they are highly non emotional they work there because the money they get so they are least bothered about your mental comforts they are not there to give you psychological therapy they do their job and get away they insert all the pipes they give you injections and get away they are least bothered what is to know what is happening in your mind. and you remain alone you re- remain aloof you remain fearful so the moment you are at that stage uh, almost death bed mentally the death already sets in and ultimately you die like a lone forlorn individual without anybody at the bedside comforting you when you are taking last breath because it happens in the hospital so none of the people none of the close near ones dear ones will be there at the time of death our guru used to say so majority will die in the hospital bed and the hospital beds god knows how many people have already died on the bed so much of negative energy is filled in the atmosphere of the hospitals i see you especially special war specially so much negative energy so that is a fate of the modern man our gurudev used to say lucky are the ones who die at their home peacefully in front of their kids and kids even to have a death in the home god god's grace should be there <laughs> our gurudev used to say this only by god's grace ultimately a few of you may die at your home on your, on your own home turf surrounded by your people so that is how so this when you think so liberation so why liberation because no more birth so once again you are not born and go, go through all these stages so same drama faces are different the drama is same life drama of the life continues so acharya is always hinting liberation mukti is important that is the actual goal see mukti is not something outside you are getting something you are acquiring all that is required is I have forgotten my true nature i should just remember i should understand who i am really it is so simple but that simple thing cannot happen because god's grace is required guru's grace is required for all that is required is i should know who i am so that no more rebirth so that is realization that is emancipation that is mukti mukti andre enu namo guru gulu helthare matte matte samsarakke marali baradha hage ee jeevana natakavanna matte matte bere bere roopadalli bere bere dehadalli bere bere kutumbadalli hutti naralaadta vaddaadta irode aa reethi jeevana maadta huttu saavugalu matte ide reethi jeevana munduriyudu idiyala adarinda hora barodu nijavada mukti matte punarjanma illa 
ನಾನು ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಆತ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಶರೀರ ಇದ್ದಾಗಲೇ ಜೀವನ್ಮುಕ್ತತೆ ಬಂದ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎ ಜೀವನ್ ಮುಕ್ತ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎ ಲಿಬರೇಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಟೋಲ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ವೈಲ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ then he continues esha swayam jyotirashesha sakshi vijnana koshe virasatya jasram lakshyam vidaye vidayen lakshyam vidayena sadasad vilakshanam akhanda vrutya ಆತ್ಮತಯಾನು ಭಾವಯ ಏಷ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರಶೇಷಸ್ತಾಕ್ಷಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕೋಶೆ ವಿಲಸತ್ ಅಜಸ್ರಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ವಿಧ ಏನ ಅಸತ್ ವಿಲಕ್ಷಣ ಅಖಂಡ ವೃತ್ತಿಯ ಆತ್ಮತಯಾನು ಭಾವಯ ಆತ್ಮತಯ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಅನುಭಾವಯ ಅನುಭಾವಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಏಷ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಅಷ್ಟೇಷ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕೋಶೆ ವಿಲಸತಿ ಅಜಸ್ರಂ ಅಜಸ್ರಂ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕೋಶೆ ವಿಲಸತಿ ಏಷ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಅಶೇಷ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಈ ಶ್ಲೋಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಆ ಆತ್ಮನ ಗುಣಗಾನವನ್ನ ಆತ್ಮನ ಲಕ್ಷಣವನ್ನು ತಿಳಿಸ್ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಚಾರ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಜ್ಯೋತಿಗಳಿಗೂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಆಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಸರ್ವ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಯಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಲ್ಲಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಈ ಆತ್ಮ ಎಲ್ಲಿರ್ತಾನೆ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಮಯ ಕೋಶ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯ ಒಳಗೆ ಬೆಳಗ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತಾನೆ ಈ ಆತ್ಮನ ಆವಾಸ ಆ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಆತ್ಮನ ಸಾನ್ನಿಧ್ಯದಿಂದ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯು ಪ್ರಕಾಶಮಾನ ಬೆಳಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಆತ್ಮನ ವಾಸಸ್ಥಾನ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಕಾಶವಾಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿಸುತ್ತಿರುತ್ತಾನೆ ವಿಲಸತಿ ಅಜಸ್ರಂ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕೋಶೆ ವಿಲಸತಿ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಸೊ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆತ್ಮ ದಿಸ್ ಆತ್ಮ ವೇರ್ ಡಸ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಯು ಫೈನ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಮಯ ಕೋಶ ಇನ್ ದ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಎವರ್ ಶೈನಿಂಗ್ ಎವರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೇಡಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಬೈ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ರೇಡಿಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ it also illuminates your buddhi intellect that is called vijnanamaya kosha so the atma resides in the cave of the buddhi lakshyam vidayayenam asat vilakshanam akhanda vrutya atmataya anubhavaya ಏನಂ ಅಸದ್ ವಿಲಕ್ಷಣ ಅಖಂಡ ವೃತ್ತಿಯ ಆತ್ಮತೆಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ವಿಧಾಯ ವಿಧಾಯ ಅನುಭಾವಯ ಸೊ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಂಜಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಎಲ್ಲ ರೀತಿ ಅಸತ್ ವಸ್ತುಗಳಿಗಿಂತ ಭಿನ್ನವಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಈ ಆತ್ಮನನ್ನೇ ನಾವು ಕೇಂದ್ರೀಕೃತ ನಮ್ಮ ಗುರಿಯಾಗಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅಖಂಡಾಕಾರ ವೃತ್ತಿಯಿಂದ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಯೋಚನೆಗಳು ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಯೋಚನೆಗಳನ್ನ ಹೊಡೆದಾಕಿ ಒಂದೇ ಭಾವದಲ್ಲಿ ಆತ್ಮನನ್ನೇ ಕುರಿತು ಧ್ಯಾನ ಮಾಡೋ ಅಖಂಡಾಕಾರ ವೃತ್ತಿಯಿಂದ ಈ ಆತ್ಮನೇ ನನ್ನ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ನಾನೇ ಆತ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಎಂದು ಧ್ಯಾನ ಮಾಡು ಅಂತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಮಾಡು ಯಾಕೆ ಅನುಭಾವಯ ಈ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಹೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಲ್ಯೂಮಿನಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಶೈನಿಂಗ್ so it is a witness of everything sarva sakshi it shines in the buddhi in the intellect in the cave of the intellect so rest resting your mind on this satma which is different from asad vastu different from unreal it is different it is totally independent of all unreal jada padartha the unreal jada padartha is called anartha it starts with your body and the entire creation so what is jadar unreal anatma vastu your physical body subtle body your mind buddhi intellect indriyas and the entire creation the sentient and non sentient thing living and non living everything comes under anatma 
The whole creation comes into Anatha. So, what he says, actually, here, resting your mind on this Atma, which is totally different from the entire Anatma was unreal. So, you experience that. You ultimately experience this Atma, enjoy that. So, with Akhandakara Vritti, with total uninterrupted concentration, with unlimited consciousness, Akhanda, where there are no different parts, with unbroken, with unbroken chain of thoughts, concentrate on Atma during meditation. Concentrate wholeheartedly on Atma Swarupa, thinking that you are that Atma Swarupa, nothing else. You are not the body anymore, mind anymore. Repeatedly I hear it. So, think that and experience finally by the grace of Guru Atma. So, the final beatification occurs. Initial efforts are mine. Initial efforts are mine. Initial efforts you have to do, I have to do. With all sincerity, with the devotion and total Shraddha and surrender. Follow the instruction of Sadhguru. We have to do. We have to sit. We have to meditate. We have to follow all the Upadesha correctly, precisely, without doubts. If doubts persist, we have to get clarified from the Sadhguru himself. With that, our effort should be tireless, you know, continuous. No question of postponing, I will do it today half-heartedly. See, my journey in the spiritual world, it took, it's going on. Next one month, I am busy with my personal work, so I will stop. No more meditation, no more dhyana. My mind is busy with the work. It is not like it is not a part-time job. So it has to be a full-time job. Akhandakara vritti means see, with the unlimited vast expanse, without any breaks, unbroken, successive, constant chain of thought, centered on Atma Swaru. 24 bar 7, I would say, mind should be geared up to the point that I am the Atma Swaru. Even in the waking state, or in the dream state, or in the full deep sleep state, only one was to, only one sad was to always reflects, radiates, shines without any change. It is a Sarva Sakshi Bhuta. It is a prime witness to all the three states. The body undergoes, the mind undergoes so many changes, but the Atma, the self will never undergo any change. It is a witness to your waking state, pure witness. It is a pure witness to your dream state. It is a pure witness to the deep sleep sushupti state. So, this is, you know, contemplation with unbroken stint of thoughts. Akhandakara vritti. So, concentrate like that and think like that. That is what Acharya is hinting here. So you must always plan your, I don't, I should not use the word plan. You must always be aware of the correct fact that I am the Atma Suru. I am no more the body. It should be hammered. It's hammered. The mind should be hammered. The e the buddhi is the nearest to the Atma. Vijnana Maya Kosha is nearest to the Atma. Even though the buddhi is also Jada, it goes away, vanishes along with the body after the death. In that sense, buddhi is also Jada. But it is the nearest to the Atma. Because Atma reflects. That is how the buddhi decides what to do, what not to do, what is correct, what is not correct. Nishay Atma. So, the buddhi has to give direction to the mind. So that is the, all initial efforts are like that. We have to strive really hard. So it is so simple. All that is required is I must know who I am. Really. In reality, I must know really who I am. Once it is known, 
nothing else is required nothing else is required you don't even aspire that you should be liberated because all those mental afflictions mental ambitions the mental goals everything will vanish mind itself will vanish manonasha in that sense aham vrutti will go away kartutva bhoktutva will go away you know i am the doer i am the enjoyer that concept will go away i am this body i am the mind that concept itself will go away that is what is called manonash ultimate so what happens then there is nothing to say nothing to rebel so once you become realized even ultimate truth is even the feeling that you have realized the feeling that you have realized the atma the feeling that you have realized the brahma padartha the feeling that you are a brahma jnani even that will vanish please follow this statement very attentively a real brahma jnani will also go beyond the feelings beyond the remembrance beyond the memory he will never utter that i am a brahma jnani he will forget that i am a brahma jnani. this is the highest truth so this is called liberation from the bond so with the guru sankalpa here we are stopping today sri rama jay rama jay jay rama sri rama jay rama jay jay rama sri rama jay rama jay jay rama sri rama jay rama jay jay हरि ओम सर सर देर इज अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम श्री कृष्णमूर्ति करणम जी ही इज आस्किंग व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन आत्मा एंड जीवा इफ यू वांट टू टेक अप द क्वेश्चन नाउ दैट इज फाइन अदरवाइज नेक्स्ट वीक इफ यू कैन आंसर दैट इज फाइन आल्सो या या इट 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 कांट बी आंसर्ड इन वन सेंटेंस in one sentence of course jiva word in the literal sense used in the uh, spiritual sense the jiva refers to some total of the entire subtle body linga sharira jiva the sub in invisible subtle body or sukshma sharira with the invisible five panchendriyas that is gnanendriyas plus five karmendriyas and mano buddhi prana and aham all combined and within that the atma resides so that is why jiva is called as jivatma it is one aspect the other aspect is the jiva in short can be referred to atma also in short because if you remove the periphery by bhaga lakshana as acharya calls if you remove the outer upadis if you remove the outer upadis of the jiva ultimately atma only will remain yes if you remove the karmendriya subtle karmendriya subtle gnanendriya subtle mind subtle ego subtle buddhi and the karmas associated with that if you remove the kernel only atma will remain so in that sense sometimes in vedanta jiva word also refers to atma it is you know equated to atma that's what acharya calls jivo brahmaiva natparah in his vedanta hindi the famous uh, uh, dvaitik siddhanta what he propounded brahma satyam jagan mithya jivo brahmaiva natparah jiva is nothing but brahma he said so there acharya means jiva means actual jivatma not the entire linga sharira devoid of all these things ultimately the atma so jiva can also be referred as atma in that highest as acharya calls so jiva, atma plus uh, atma yeah. plus all the shells is jiva yeah, yeah yeah you can put it like subtle body sukshma sharira is called jiva Basically. thank you so much sir thank you for the enlightenment this is coming together and connecting so well now we we went through all the koshas and now how the koshas are connected to atman uh, is so beautiful the connecting so. 
is sutratma is prana prana <laughs> thank you sir hari om hari om